As an artist living in Italy, I spent many days with my sketchbook, sketching the various sculptures, paintings, and building ruins that scattered across the peninsula. Living in Rome, literally on every corner, there were ruins left from the Roman Empire. Columns, arches, all indications of the great builders that the Romans were. Now, to understand and really appreciate what the Romans did, let's go back in time and start with where architecture began back in this course with the primitive era. So, if you remember, we had the post and lintel. We have one post, two posts, and on top is the lintel. Looks great. Matter of fact, we still use some element of this today with any doorway that you walk in or out of, right? But there is an issue because even though this looks pretty sturdy, the more and more weight you add on to this lintel up here, it's going to eventually crack. Now, the next small little architecture feature that we studied was the corbel arch, in which we took stones, right, and we began to stack them on top of each other in this kind of arced bridge formation that you see here. It looks nice, it looks beautiful, but it's not all that sturdy. It's not gonna hold up a weight of a big building. So, the Romans are going to improve on this. Now, a Roman arch is much more beautiful, much more graceful, okay? As you see here, right? It's a series of precise cut stones stacked one on top of each other, but the way they've been cut allows the pressure and weight of the building not to come down the middle, but to actually push down the sides and down to the ground where the foundation of the earth is gonna help build up that building. Now, the other thing is, as you can see, there's no stacked stone behind me. We have a column here, a column there, and you have this arch. In many ways, it's like a post and lintel and a cobalt arch kind of coming together, but in a much more improved way. And the fact that there is no stone behind me allows not only for a graceful entry and exit for any building, but it also means that you don't have to use a lot of material and time creating this wall. The negative space here is very practical when you're going to build an empire. You want to build things quickly, efficiently, and the arch is the thing that is going to be the key to building this empire. Now, take a look at this thing. This is a big wall. We've got to imagine how long it took them to create this thing. And this really is how people built these things up until the Roman times. If you don't believe me, let's go back in time to see what the Egyptians were doing. Now, we've traveled to Egypt. Behind me, as you know, is a pyramid. And take a look at these stones, right? These stones, individually cut, quarried, dragged up here, and several slaves over the course of many years not only cut these, but stacked them into this nice pyramid shape behind me. Now, you would think things would have improved, but actually, no. Let's go take a look at what the Greeks have done. Now, pretty nice building. We're here in Greece on top of the um, Acropolis in Athens, and we know how great the Greeks were. Great, created great sculptures, face painting, they created democracy, geometry, so forth and so on. But in terms of architecture, they made some improvements, but again, we have stone stacked on stone stacked on stones, from the columns to the pediments, and so forth and so on. So, not much has changed. Now, living in Italy at the foot of a large mountain made of marble, oftentimes visited the quarries, imagining what it would take to build a building out of stone. Now let's imagine for a second that we're going to do that. Remember, we're in a time with no electricity, no machinery. So they've got to climb the mountain, cut the stone from the mountain, then bring it down carefully, and then eventually get it to the place where they can finally begin to work on it. So, let's say I do eventually get the stone 
like the one I'm sitting on here, from the quarry, down the mountain, and eventually to my studio here in Sacramento. <clears throat> well, take a look at this thing. It's not exactly the shape that I want it to be to create a wall or arch or anything else I want to do with it. So the next phase is to chisel this down to the right shape. You can see the stone has been chiseled down to a nice rectangular shape here. It's exactly what we want to create one piece into a big massive wall. Not that easy. I'm out of breath and I just had to move it a couple of feet. That's why the Romans invented cement. We're here on the construction site of a Roman building. And you may recognize this thing that's just pulled up here. It's a concrete cement truck. You may have had it pull up to your house to create a patio or a pool. We see it all over town creating sidewalks and buildings. But even though the Romans didn't have a cement truck like this, they did invent the recipe for cement. And in doing so, radically changed architecture forever. Matter of fact, there's no modern city that you can walk into without stepping on or touching some element of the Roman Empire. Slowly, the Romans began to realize that they had a powerful mixture here. Mixing concrete with the arch was going to give them the potential to build great, beautiful buildings that would last thousands and thousands of years. And it's this very reason that when I lived in Rome, I was still able to sketch those buildings or ruins of them, because in some shape or form, still existing till this day. This mixture allowed them to do four different types of structures. The first one is the barrel vault, which is essentially taking an arch and repeating it over and over and over again until you get essentially a hallway. The more arches you have, the stronger the building is going to be. Expanding on this idea, they took two barrel vaults and crossed them together for what is known as a groin vault. Here you have not only the four arches that make up the entrances of their barrel vault, but where they cross, you can see here that you essentially have this X formation, which is essentially two arches crossed over at the center of this groin vault. Now, because arches and concrete together are so strong, it allows you to free up the wall sprays significantly. So rather than being bulky, you can free up the space, as you can see here. Now, because a groin vault is essentially a multitude of arches, you can really free up the space. Then the Romans took it one step further. They essentially realized that they can make a barrel vault much better by essentially making a sequence of groin vaults. And so if you have an X where the two arches cross over in the groin vault, you then repeat that over and over and over to create this tremendous hallway, if you will but you can make these much taller and much bigger because they're just so much stronger than a barrel vault. This really becomes the framework for some of the more grand buildings that we're going to see that the Romans built. The Romans soon realized that if you took this sequence of groin vaults, shortened it up a bit, and then put it on top of your first floor, it would essentially allow you to bring in a lot of light into a building. In doing so, they created something called a fenestrated sequence of groin vaults, one of my favorite words. Now, if you remember your art history, 
This is much like the Egyptians' Clara story they invented. Just a bit more elegant and lets in a lot more light. And believe it or not, the Romans managed to squeak out one more architectural structure from this combination of arches and concrete. Now, let's go back to the sketchbook. You can imagine an arch, and then you add an additional one, and then another, and then another. Soon what you get is this circular dome-like structure. And it is, in fact, a dome. What we're going to call it is a hemispherical dome with oculus and that oculus is essentially in latin means eye it's the eye of the dome for structural reasons this is important we'll get into that later but you're going to see one of the most beautiful structures the romans ever created and as a matter of fact you can still walk into it to this very day that uses this dome structure so next time you're in rome or in any modern city, make sure to write in your sketchbook some of the important structures that the Romans created. The arch, the barrel vault, the groin vault, the fenestrated sequence of groin vaults, and the dome, or the hemispherical dome with oculus. Jot them down, memorize them, because you never know. You may come across one of these in your own city or while you're traveling to other cities around the world.